Hi everyone, today I wanted to take a look at the Democratic presidential uh, debate that just went down in Washington DC. It was hosted by CNN. The moderators were Jake Tapper, uh, Dana Bash, and uh, I can't I can't pronounce the last one. Um, I can't remember the last moderator, but debate was between Senator Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, and uh, so the first sort of 40 minutes and also the last like five minutes were dedicated to the coronavirus, which I thought was interesting. In terms of the coronavirus itself, I thought that Biden slightly came out, probably a very slightly came out on top of Bernie Sanders. But in the first hour of the debate, overall, I thought that you know, they both kind of held their own. In the second hour, I thought Bernie sort of came on top. However, overall, I thought that it was kind of, they both kind of just were there, right? They, you know, they went after each other, but not in a very significant way. Uh, and I thought that at the end of the day, the debate did, did not shake up the race. And you can see at the top of your screen here, and I think that's a default win for the former vice president there, Joe Biden. And so, yeah, a big focus of the debate was on the coronavirus, you can see there, uh, hosted by CNN and then Biden and Sanders. So it, it was an interesting debate. I really prefer this one-on-one -on -one format compared to having seven people shouting across the stage where you had Warren and Bloomberg and Buttigieg and Klobuchar and a bunch of people who really, quite frankly, don't matter uh, at, this, at that point in the race. And it's nice to have Sanders and Biden head to head. And my question is, if the coronavirus came a few months earlier and all of the candidates were still in the race, how would the podiums have been positioned, right? Because they have to be six feet apart. I don't know if they would just kind of ignore that or if they would have like very spread apart podiums or if they would, which would make the candidates seem very small or if they would have more of a focus on split screens so that the podium placement didn't matter as much or if they had like, you know, level one and level two, they would be like level one on top of level two. So they would be on like two separate floors, the podiums, <laughs> that would be interesting. So you could have like, Sanders, Warren and Klobuchar on top and then Biden, Warren, Buttigieg in no particular order on the bottom or you could have the top three on the top so Sanders, Biden, Warren and then below them like on the second floor. A anyway, I don't know but it was it was interesting to have just a one-on-one -on -one debate but in, in terms of the coronavirus I th did think that if I can find the slide there for Joe Biden. I did think that Biden did come out on top in that discussion. He presented himself as a leader. He, uh, I thought it was good. Uh, he tried to tie it to the Ebola crisis. I don't think it's really kind of comparative, but I mean, it is kind of the best comparison that they can, that we can have right now. So that was interesting to take a look at. So I thought Biden did come out on top of the coronavirus. I don't think Sanders made the link effectively enough to get him back into this race about how, or I don't think he can come back in this race, but some people do. And for those people, I don't think that Sanders did enough to get back. Uh, in ter and I think he should have linked coronavirus with healthcare. He should have gone after Biden on healthcare as it relates to coronavirus, which is kind of what he did. But it was kind of half-hearted, right? He didn't go, he didn't really go all in uh on the on that um so and i so i thought the vice president did well in terms of that uh but in terms of also in the first hour there was a bit of debate over social security i thought that sanders effect uh sanders attacks on biden did land i thought they were effective attacks i think that from a from a viewer's standpoint, Sanders effectively cornered Biden into stumbling over his own words where then Sanders could expand on that. I thought Sanders, uh, I thought he did well in cornering Biden on many of his older votes, 
but I do think Biden did do well in terms of Sanders, uh, in terms of the guns, gun issue, which is a very weak spot in Sanders' record. I thought, uh, so overall, I thought that in the first hour, they both kind of did the same. Biden was very strong on the coronavirus. I thought that Sanders did a bit better in Social Security, which was in the first hour as well. So overall, I, I kind of think that the first hour was sort of a wash for both candidates. Biden didn't completely fall flat in Social Security, though. He was able to hold his own. He denied the charge. Seemed a bit, you know, kind of a broken record, but, you know, he did what he had to do, and I thought that it was some somewhat holding his own. In the second hour, I thought Sanders did better than Biden in, in the second hour. However, I don't think it was enough to change the state of the race. And so in the second hour, I thought Sanders did well. You can see a graphic there of Bernie Sanders. Um, I thought that, that, by the way, that PBS News Hour, I thought that was one of his best debates. But um, uh, I thought that Sanders did, uh, he did sort of, he was okay, right, in both hours. But I thought he did better in the second hour than in the first hour. Uh, in the second hour, I think that where a lot of other issues were discussed, like healthcare, like, uh, you know, climate change. I thought Sanders did well on climate change. I think he did better than Biden on that issue. But Biden, again, able to hold his own on many of these progressive issues. Uh, Sanders did not commit to picking a woman as his vice president. Biden did do that. I thought that was an interesting dynamic. Uh, by the way, just after the... Just when they were going into the concluding statement where they were talking about the coronavirus, it looked like Biden was checking his watch, which, you know, you don't want a Bush-Clinton 1992 repeat of, you know, checking a watch during the debate. That would not have gone down very well. But, um, but Sanders, I thought, did better in the second hour of the debate. Biden stumbled over his own words a bit. But I don't think Sanders... Sanders' campaign really wanted Biden to just completely fall flat on his face. I don't think that was the case. I think Biden, he didn't lose. I thought that he did well. I thought both candidates did well. I love not having the live audience clapping at everything the candidates are saying. I love just having a Biden and Sanders going at it back and forth in a conversation debate instead of just, you know, moments in the debate. I don't think that there were many moments in this debate, uh, but I thought that overall it was a very substantive debate and I thought that it served the audience very, very well, this debate. There was no kind of... I mean, maybe during the Social Security portion there was a bit of kind of, you know bickering but overall there wasn't kind of the Buttigieg Klobuchar kind of bickering just you know constantly whatever the other says there has to be something wrong with it there was some moments of agreement but uh I think Sanders did overuse you know Joe and I have a disagreement here and um, I think it was good for Sanders to drop the Joe as my good friend and you know my friend Joe and you know Joe and I have some disagreements but at the end of the day Joe Joe Biden my friend Joe Biden I thought it was good he dropped that at the end of the day because you know it is a campaign uh, I thought but at the end of the day did Sanders do enough to change the race and I think that at the end of the day, it was the former vice president. Even though I thought Sanders overall substantively won the debate, it's clear that I think Joe Biden is the winner of the debate because Sanders didn't fundamentally change the state of the race. And if the insurgent, in this case Sanders isn't really surging, but if the underdog doesn't change the state of the race, it is a winner for the person on top. That's why, you know, in the Clinton-Trump debates, you know, oh, sorry, in the Sanders-Clinton debates, Sanders won all the debates, right, against Clinton, or most of them, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, he didn't, he didn't really do enough to fundamentally change the state of the race. And tonight, Sanders did not do enough to fundamentally change the state of the race. And therefore, even though I thought Sanders did better on the substantive terms, I think that it's a win for the former vice president because he was able to just not change the state of the race. That's why a lot of the, the Nevada debate, right, 
or the New Hampshire debate, Sanders was the front runner. He didn't have a great debate, but none of the other candidates fundamentally challenged him in a broad enough way uh, that that uh, that it would actually change the race. And that's why I, I had Sanders as the winner for most of those debates. Today, I have Joe Biden as the winner. And another, just a loser, uh, I thought that electability was a loser in this debate. It didn't get much coverage, which is probably good for Bernie Sanders. He tried to make the electable case Joe Biden did, but I don't think it really worked. But overall, Joe Biden, the winner, in my opinion, of the debate hosted by CNN uh, in partnership with the Democratic National Committee, massive focus on the coronavirus. The debate didn't shake up the race, which is a default win for the former vice president. So that's my end debate breakdown. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching, and good night. Thank you.